Hi, this is Dr. Eric Hussey, and I'm giving you a little bit of information about the new panoptic ophthalmoscope, and in particular, uh, taking pictures with it. And I want to stress a couple of things. Um, first is, uh, it's a really handy device on folks that it's hard to get pictures on. And uh, so in another video, my staff will show you their uh, thoughts about uh, what works best, what doesn't work, uh, the little tips the tips that they've come up with uh, working with these cameras for a while. But let me show you a couple of things and hopefully I have this set up so that we don't compromise any names or anything like that. Um, but this first set of uh, picture, pictures, we have the left eye on the left and the right eye on the right. Uh, this is from a guy who's uh, 93, I think, and he's bent over in a wheelchair. Can't really straighten up too well. Uh, can't get his can't get his eyes open well, so you can't put him in, for example, a field instrument or a or a slit lamp, something like that. But son of a gun, we can get pictures. You can see the the uh, cupping. Uh, pretty well there. They're not perfect pictures. It's hard to get his eyes open um, But we get pictures So let's switch to a couple of disabled folks uh, Let's see. I guess we have right eye on the left now um, but <clears throat> These are two folks who are disabled and it's uh, again, it's difficult to get them to sit still to aim their eyes uh, that kind of thing. But one of the advantages of especially the newer panoptic is it has uh, uh, it takes the pictures in sort of a running uh, reel kind of like taking a video and so you can pick and choose what pictures you want and you can download then five pictures and I'll show you how I do that uh, in a moment. But You can see again although the pictures aren't perfect uh, left eye is uh, better than the right eye Although the pictures aren't perfect, they're good enough that you can see stuff. Yeah, uh, especially on the on the left eye with a better picture, you can get uh, pretty good definition there. Um, and this is somebody who was hard to get, hard to examine, hard to get pictures on. Uh, this is another disabled woman, and again the same thing. This is using one of the older versions. My staff uses the new version. I use the old one. That's the way life goes, isn't it? And so, uh, so uh, again, you can notice some things like it's hard to get things centered on her, that kind of stuff. But by golly, we have some documentation. There are folks that I've seen who I cannot get, uh, I cannot get a good look in their eyes but because of the angles that we can get with the panoptic and because we're a little further away and because again this running video concept then we can get some we can get some pictures sometimes I don't get a look at the optic nerve until we get pictures um, this is another thing that I do which uh, what it does is lets me compare year to year so this one this picture is from 2018 there's the left eye from 2018, and there's the the uh, right eye from from uh, this year from 2021. Here's the left eye. It's a little darker. Um, I think uh, uh, probably because she was getting a little tired of um, going through this stuff. Um, uh, and so one of some of the things that come into play with pictures, of course, how big is the pupil? and are they squinting their eyes and uh, we tend not to yell at people a lot we just um, uh, except in fun but we try to get the the best picture that we can um, and this is a guy we've been following for high eye pressures for a long time and he is not interested in um, uh, in taking drops anything like that so notice just like on the other picture what I've done is and I'll show you how I do that is I made an outline of the uh, of the optic cup and so there's the left eye made another outline there and then what I can do is on the old picture I can just duplicate this and then move it over to the new picture and 
and uh, uh, and then get an idea. It's not perfect, but I can get an idea if things have changed. Um, and one more of those, and I'll show you how I download and all that stuff. Same deal. I've made a I've made an outline. Uh, let me let me make that a little bigger for you. Uh, let's make it even a little bigger. Made an outline of the cup, and then I can compare straight across to the newer pictures. Again, not perfect, but it gives us an idea of what's going on. So what I do is my staff uses uh, AirDrop. I've got a Mac, and so when I talk about doing things, um, take that into account that I'm doing things as in uh, uh, with a Mac. And so here's some pictures from yesterday. And let's uh, let's see. Let's go to these. These are done with the latest version. Uh, and so these have been downloaded to me using um, um, using AirDrop, and I move them over there. Now they're on my uh, now they're on uh, in, in a um, uh, Word program. Uh, for Max, it's called Pages. I'm sure that there are other things uh, that you can, uh, other programs that you can use. Um, I'm just not familiar with uh, other programs. And there we go. Let's get another. And so what I do, I usually drop the size down a little bit. And. And that is just a matter of having done this for a while and trying to find out what fits on the page, that's all. And so we have five pictures from the right eye, and I did not look at these ahead of time. Uh, I, did the, I did the same thing yesterday. And so we'll put those over here. And now I've got pretty decent pictures there. Let's see, that one's a little blurry, isn't it? And so there we go. Let's get that. And then when we're talking about looking at, at, uh, uh, at optic nerves, you know, I try to take the best picture around. So let's go. And this is way blown up. Um, so let's do this. Show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take my marking tool here in my pages program and I'm just going to draw a circle around the cup. Perfect? No. Uh, let's be real. And I usually make it dotted and I make it a little smaller. There we go. And now I've got a rough outline of the cup. Perfect? No. But again, it's something that I can track over time. Then I duplicate that, and I can just move this over. Let's just move it over. And I know this is the same, same eye, but you kind of get the idea if it's year to year or what. And there we go. Uh, just based on the differences in the pictures, you get a little bit of difference in this. In this uh, and how you might want to draw the cup, but you can see that I'm a little outside the uh, the edge of the cup there, and I'm a little outside the edge of the cup there. So, um, in my uh, finicky nature, would I probably um, change the sizes on that? Yeah, a little bit, but you get the idea. We can do the same thing with this uh, optic nerve. And again, uh, this is this is based on what I can do in a Mac, and I don't know how to work a non-Mac. And this is with a little less magnification. And um, but boom, I've got another. I've got another um, uh, drawing that I can use to check in future years. I mean, you can get on a Mac, you can get really uh, um, artful about how you do this, bring these things in just to where you want them, and blow up the picture and make it smaller and that kind of stuff. 
uh, and but you get the idea. This this then is something that when uh, when I look at these pictures in the future, I can transfer the picture with the circle. Then I can duplicate the circle and transfer that to a newer picture and see if we're seeing a lot of change. So that's how I manipulate images. I think it's a pretty handy tool. Um, and it's a pretty handy tool for primary care. I'm sure that um, I'm sure that a true glaucoma specialist would would cringe at at uh, uh, perhaps you know it's not quite precise enough uh, for him uh, him or her. But you get the idea that it's pretty nifty for following things. Uh, year after year after year which those of us in primary care are doing we're seeing these people on an annual basis or every other year sometimes it's much further apart than that uh, that gives us something that we can watch